Hey everybody, so you've seen the thumbnail and the title, so chances are you know what this video is about. Today we're going to be checking out two Harry Potter Hogwarts Express train sets, both of which are made by Lionel. So here's the first one. Ooh, it's kind of heavy. And this is the O-Gage Lion Chief Hogwarts Express train set. And it's basically got everything you need to get going in one box. The train, the track, the power supply, and the remote control. And it's also got Bluetooth 5.0 on board. And I paid right at 350 bucks for this set, although the price that you pay will vary depending on when and where you buy it. Now, on the more budget-friendly side of things, we've got this Hogwarts Express set, also made by Lionel. This is their ready-to-play Hogwarts Express set. Ready to play is a gauge that I think Lionel invented, but it's very close to G-Gauge, although it's not compatible with G-Gauge. And once again, this has everything you need, the train and the track, and in this case, the train is battery powered. And I got this at Costco for right at $65, so this is very inexpensive. And we'll be checking out both of these sets right now on Eric's Trains. All right, so we'll start off with the O-Gage set because everybody knows that it's O-Gage or no-Gage. So again, this is a Lion Chief set. It means you've got the Lion Chief remote control and you've also got Bluetooth on board. That way you can run the set using the Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet. As you can see, it's a gorgeous box and I've since learned that this style of box is used across the entire Harry Potter product line regardless of what company is making the product. You saw the other set that I'm reviewing today has the same style of box. Well, a few days after I got these, I picked up this Department 56 building. This is a different company from Lionel. This is the Three Broomsticks, and you can see it's the same style of box. And then a few days after that, I went to a candy shop, and I saw a bunch of Harry Potter candy, and lo and behold, they all had the same style of box as well. So it's pretty cool that the folks in charge of the Harry Potter licensing require that all manufacturers use this style of box. It creates a nice uniform appearance across the entire product line. So this box contains the train, which is the locomotive, the tender, and three passenger cars, the Lion Chief remote, and then down here it says you get a simple wall pack power supply and a large 40 by 60 inch oval of fast track. So as I said in the intro, this is basically an entire ready to run set in one box. Anyway, enough talk. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open. like it pulls out like that. All right. Looks like they've got the locomotive packaged by itself. And there it is cast metal construction on the locomotive so it's got a very reassuring weight to it all metal wheels looks good all right then we've got the tender and this is plastic construction so not quite as heavy as the locomotive but it does have all metal wheels plastic coal load up there. Speaker for the sound system. Very nice. And then we've got the Lion Chief remote. Looks nice. Look at that beautiful Hogwarts Express seal on there. That looks great. This should be the power supply. The wall wart, if you will. Yep. Got a little L on there. And then we've got this little bag that contains a bottle of smoke fluid for the locomotive, as well as a couple of spare traction tires for the locomotive as well. I'm pretty impressed. This really has everything you need to get going. And then below here, we should have the three passenger cars. Yep. Yep. 
There's one of them. These are lighted on the inside. It's all plastic, plastic trucks, metal wheels, center rail pickup rollers on each truck, plastic couplers. It's a pretty entry-level passenger car, but then again, this is an entry-level set. This is not supposed to be some super expensive high-end set. It's supposed to be affordable, and it is. And so the rolling stock and the locomotive, they're on the more affordable side of things as well, which means you're not going to see a lot of die-cast metal and so forth on the cars and everything. But it looks great. Nothing to complain about, especially for 350 Here's the second passenger car. And here's the third car. Very cool. Now, my understanding is there's two versions of this set out there. This is the more affordable of the two sets. The more expensive one, I think it's four or $500. And it's more expensive because everything is the same except one of the passenger cars is a Dementors passenger car. And it includes a sound system that plays the sounds of the Dementors. It might have some lighting effects too, I'm not sure. This set doesn't have the Dementors car. It is available for separate sale, however, and so I may get that before the end of this review, and then we'll go ahead and run that car with this set. That should be a lot of fun. And then last but not least, we've got this box that contains all of the track. Okay, so we should have eight pieces of 036 curved track, and it looks like we do. There's one of those. And then here's our sections of straight track, which should include a terminal section at least to allow us to plug the power adapter to the track. So this is the terminal section. So with your power pack, this end goes into the wall, of course. And then the other end goes into the terminal section like that. The light comes on and your track has power. Easy peasy. And then this piece contains a plug-and-play port, which you can use to power any of Lionel's plug-and-play accessories. That's pretty cool. And then we've got two standard 10-inch sections of Fast Track as well, for a total of four straight sections. Now, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with Lionel's Fast Track system, it is an excellent and easy to use track system. In fact, this is probably the most user-friendly track system on the market, period. So you've got your sections of track, be they curved or straight, and to join them together, you just slide the blades in and click it, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. And it's extremely tough and rugged, great in the hands of kids. Your dog can walk on it. You could probably step on it and you wouldn't do too much damage to it. Although I wouldn't recommend stepping on it on a regular basis. But yeah, this can go on the floor, on a table, anywhere. It's got holes where you can screw it into a table if you want a permanent setup. They make expansion packs so you can grow your layout. They make switches, all sorts of stuff. And when it comes time to disassemble the track, it's just as easy. That's all there is to it. So when it comes to something that is excellent quality, rugged, and easy to use, it really doesn't get any better than Lionel's Fast Track system. So I'm going to start off by running the Hogwarts Express on my layout for a few minutes, and that way it'll be a little bit easier to show you the details and features of the set than with it running on the floor. And also this serves to illustrate the fact that you don't have to run this set with Lionel Fast Track. You can run this with any three rail O gauge track. In this case I'm using Atlas, but you can use MTH, you could use Menard's tubular track, you could use old school Lionel tubular track, or or you can use the fast track that comes with the set. It doesn't matter. As long as it's three rail O gauge track, it'll work. Now when you put the set on the track, it's important to connect the locomotive to the tender via this drawbar. And the drawbar not only allows the locomotive to pull the tender and the rest of the train, but it also serves as an electrical connection between the two. So if I separate these like that, and I turn it over, you can see there are some metal connectors in there. And so that's what allows the locomotive to communicate with the electronics and the tender. So when you want to connect these, you just drop the drawbar in there like that and push it down. And that's it. Easy peasy. Let me go ahead and show you a couple of control switches in the cab. So 
We've got a switch here that turns the smoke on and off if you don't like smoke coming from your locomotive. And then here we've got a chuff on off switch and that will turn the sounds off if you don't like sounds coming from your locomotive. So, you know, a lot of people, they don't like the smoke units, they don't like the sound, they just want to hear the clickety clack of the train going around the rails and that's what those switches are for. The rest of the train is connected via these O-gauge couplers. We call these lobster claw couplers in the hobby because they look like big lobster claws. Anyway, they work because there's a little tab on the left side of each coupler and if you push down on the tab it opens the coupler. And There's one on the other side of this coupler as well and now they're both open. And to connect them back together you just ram them together like that and they're good to go. Very simple. Now you might notice this little thumbtack looking thing on the bottom. That is a metal plate and there's one below each of these couplers and that allows if you have an uncoupling section of track which the set does not include an uncoupling section but if you have one on your layout it's basically an electromagnet and when you trigger it it pulls down this metal plunger and throws the coupler like that. And then to reconnect them you just ram them together again. Now it should be noted that when you want to ram these things together to connect the couplers you don't have to have both couplers open. You only need one to be open. So here I've got one closed and one opened and it still works. I want to show you the underside of one of these cars for just a moment just to kind of give you a quick 101 on how this stuff works. So with O-gauge track, three rail O-gauge track, you've got the two outer rails, those are common, and the center rail is hot. So on the car, you've got metal wheels. Those go to the outer rails and get the common, and the hot comes in on the center rail pickup roller. That gives you power, which allows you to light up the car. Now, if you ever have one of these cars and the lighting is inconsistent, maybe it's flickering or something like that, usually it's because you've either got dirty wheels, a dirty pickup roller, or dirty pickup rollers, or dirty track, or all three. So if you ever have a problem with the lighting in one of these cars, the first thing you want to do is clean your track, clean your wheels, and clean these center rail pickup rollers. And a lot of times that will make it a whole lot better. Now with modern train sets with LED lighting, the flickering and stuff is not nearly as big of a problem as it used to be back in the day, you know, when your granddad had a train. But it can still happen every now and then today. And so if that happens, make sure you've got clean track, clean wheels, and clean pickup rollers. And by the way, the locomotive works the same way. You can see the outer wheels are metal for the common, and then they've got center rail pickup rollers here for the hot. All right, so let's go ahead and power this up. The first thing I'll do is apply power to the track. Now, when it first powers up, you're going to hear this chime playing over and over. doesn't mean it's broken. It means it's waiting for a signal, either a Bluetooth signal or a signal from the Lion Chief remote. So we'll start off with the Lion Chief remote. We'll power it on, and I did add the three AAA batteries. And as soon as it gets a signal, it powers up and you get train sounds. So here's the whistle. Here's the bell. And here are the crew talk sounds. And these should have some custom Harry Potter sound effects. You'll have a couple tracks that'll play when the locomotive is sitting still like it is now. And there's a couple other tracks that'll play if the locomotive is in motion. Now right now, there's no smoke coming out of the smokestack. Maybe just a little bit. This has one of those older puffer style smoke units instead of a fancier fan driven smoke unit that you see in more expensive Lionel locomotives. And so you really won't get a lot of smoke output until the locomotive is actually in motion and it can activate the air pump mechanism that'll make the smoke come out of the smokestack. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and roll out the Hogwarts Express.
Now, earlier I mentioned the add-on Dementors car. Well, here it is. I got this on Amazon. It was $84, and it has Dementor silhouettes in all the windows, and it also makes spooky Dementor sounds. So I'll get this out of the box and add it to the train. Now I've got the Hogwarts Express running on the loop of fast track that comes with the set. And you can see it's not a terribly large loop of track, especially considering the length of the train and even more especially considering the add-on Dementors car. But it's enough to get going and it's also the perfect size for around a Christmas tree. But because the train doesn't really have much room to go around on this relatively small loop of track, I will probably bust out one of the fast track expansion packs in a moment and maybe we can make this into a figure eight or something like that. Now, what I'm gonna do now is take the power from the wall wart and connect it to the terminal track. That will provide power to the track. And then I'll also be using that plug and play section as well. So into the plug and play terminal, I'm gonna add this Lionel accessory. This is the Lionel plug and play haunted house. I did a full review on this accessory a couple years ago if you wanna learn more about it. So here's the haunted house and here's the power cord, which goes directly into the plug and play outlet. And now let's power up the track. As you can hear, the locomotive is waiting for a signal, but this time, rather than using the Lion Chief remote that comes with the set, I'm gonna use the Lion Chief app on my smartphone. So here it is, press right here. There's the locomotive and connect. There we go. Very easy. Now, one of the big advantages of using the Lion Chief app is that you get access to a lot of features that you don't get with the handheld remote. So, for example, you can change the pitch of the whistle and bell. So, right now, here's the whistle. And here's the bell. But if I go to the sound menu, I can change the pitch of the whistle, make it go down and make the bell go up. Now, pretty cool. Something else we can do in the sound menu is record our own custom sounds. So we press this live button here and we can record up to three custom sounds. So check it out. All aboard the Hogwarts Express. And that sound is coming from the locomotive, not the phone. And as you saw, you can record up to a 60 second sound clip. Next stop, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Next stop, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. 
And if you press this live button, you can transmit live to the locomotive like this. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. Can I see your tickets, please? Can I see your tickets, please? <laughs> Pretty neat stuff. Now, if the locomotive had electrocouplers, we could throw them with these buttons, but they're grayed out because this locomotive does not have electrocouplers, only manually operated couplers. And then this button is the crew talk sequence button. Now, uh, your train leaves in 10 minutes. There's your ticket. Stick to it, Harry. That's very important. Stick to your ticket. And finally, if you don't want to use the manual throttle and whistle and bell buttons, you can tell the train what to do with your voice using the voice control button like this. Blow the whistle. Activating the whistle. Slow speed. Going to slow speed. <laughs> Medium speed. Going to medium speed. Stop. Stop again. Very cool. All right, now we'll have a little extra fun by expanding the default loop of track that comes with the set into a figure eight. And we'll do that using the Lionel Fast Track figure eight expansion pack. And the interesting thing about this expansion pack and all their expansion packs for that matter, is that it doesn't give you all the track necessary to make the figure eight. Rather, what it gives you is the extra pieces that are necessary to turn the default loop of track that you get with any starter set into the figure eight. And I think that's kind of cool. They give you exactly what you need to start off with a basic set like the set we have here and expand it. And just like that, we've got a figure eight. All right, here's the other Hogwarts Express set that we're going to check out today. And as I already said, this is Lionel's Ready to Play gauge, which is a gauge that they pretty much just made up. It's similar to G gauge, but it's actually a little bit smaller than true G gauge. So this will not run on G gauge track. It's got its own gauge of track included in the box. Just like the O gauge set, this has everything you need to get going. You've got the train, the track, and the remote control. The main differences are that this train only has two passenger cars rather than three. And you've got the track and the remote, but there's no power supply because in this case everything is battery powered. The locomotive is powered by six C-cell batteries and the remote control was powered by three AAA batteries. Even though this set is much less expensive than the O-Gauge set that you just saw, I actually like the box a lot better because for one thing, it's got a nice plastic handle for easy transport 
And for another thing, the box is meant to be reclosed. And that makes this set a great choice for seasonal layouts, such as running it under the Christmas tree. So when Christmas comes around, you can pull it out of the box and run it under the tree. And then when the holiday season is over, you can easily repack it and put it away in storage. 37 pieces. So I believe it opens up over here. Yep. And we've got to cut some tape. There's the locomotive. And unlike the O-Gauge set, everything on here is plastic. There is not a lot of metal at all. But that's expected. This is a much less expensive set. Therefore, the quality is not going to be as high as the more expensive O-Gauge set. But it's $65. You really can't complain about anything at that price point. I mean, in my opinion, this is a great deal for $65. And I haven't even run the thing yet. Looks nice, though. And there's the tender. Again, all plastic. Even the wheels are plastic. And here's one of the coaches. I think the coach might be heavier than the locomotive. <laughs> very basic, but very nice. Again, for 65 bucks, you really can't complain. Obviously, since these don't have metal wheels or pickup rollers of any kind, they're not going to be lighted on the inside, and that's okay. They can get away with plastic wheels because the track is not powered. It's got plastic track. All the power comes from the C batteries that are put in the tender of the locomotive, so they can get away with plastic track. And, you know, it's kind of flimsy. It's not super high quality, but it'll do. Snaps together like that. Very easy. And you know, for the money, this is perfectly fine. It's not brittle or anything like that. It is flexible. And in my experience, it works just fine. I've got another set that's just like this, except it's for the Polar Express. And I've had it for maybe five or six years. I've used it several times over the years. And the track has never had an issue. So it's cheap, inexpensive, but effective. So they've got enough track here to make an oval that's approximately 73 inches by 50 inches. So a bunch of curves and a bunch of little straight pieces as well. So straight, curved, couldn't be easier. And then here is the included remote. And again, this requires three AAA batteries, which are not included. All right, so I was wrong. The C batteries go into the locomotive, not the tender. And they've got this little door that comes off the back. And the C batteries go right in here. And slides in like that. And there we go. Alright, and they've got a little on-off switch at the top, so if I switch it on... It's waiting for a signal from the remote, but it is working. So on that topic, let's put some batteries in the remote. So here's the remote. We've got forward, backward, music, bell, and whistle. So let's see what happens if I turn this on. There we go. Got a little light back here to let you know it's getting the signal. Yeah. 
And this plays the announcements, and I believe it's got the same two announcements that the O-Gage set has. Let's find out. Now, um, your train leaves in 10 minutes. Yep. There's your ticket. Stick to it, Harry. That's very important. Stick to your ticket. But Hagrid, there must be a mistake. This is platform nine and three quarters. There's no such thing. Is there? Pretty neat. And if we go forward, the wheels should start moving. And they do. And backwards. <laughs> Pretty neat. So, yeah, let's get it on the track and take it for a spin. Unlike the O-Gage Hogwarts Express set, I don't have an entire layout dedicated to the ready-to-play gauge, so this one's going directly on the floor, and so I'll just start assembling the track and making my little oval of track come to life. And there's the completed oval, and it's a pretty good size. I mean, this is my living room. There's Chessie over there, and got a pretty good oval of track going here. All right, I've checked all the wheels to make sure they're on the track correctly, and so has Chessie. He says we're good to go, so we'll power it up. Everything look good, Chessie? Better watch out, Chessie. <laughs> Smart cat. <laughs> This is max speed. Not terribly fast, but you know, for around the Christmas tree or something like that, it's more than fast enough. All right, so there you have it, the Lionel Ready to Play Hogwarts Express set. Overall, I like this set. Now, it ran fine most of the time. The only issue I had during the hour that I ran this thing was that once or twice, you know, because of the inexpensive plastic track and the lightweight plastic wheels, once or twice the wheels popped off the rails and I had to re-rail them, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And again, at that $65 price point, there's really nothing to complain about. You know, it's not a fancy set. There's not a lot of features. It's not super high quality, but it gets the job done. And in this case, I think the fact that it's not super high quality and not very expensive really works in its favor because the best application I can think for something like this is around the Christmas tree. And if you're like me and you have pets or if you have small children, at some point the train's probably going to get knocked off the track. And for $65, unlike a lot of the more expensive and fancier trains that I have in my collection, if this thing gets knocked off the track and gets a scratch or two, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. So for its intended purpose, you know, around the Christmas tree, on the floor, or for young kids, and especially at that $65 price point, I think this is a great set.
All right, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current supporters on Patreon. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra big thank you goes out to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names listed at the end of this video. And of course, if you'd like to support this channel on Patreon, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. But that's about it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.